hopefully. Okay, well, um, welcome to the whirlwind here, once I get this up. All right, um, I am going to talk about encoding music manuscripts in Vanderbilt University Special Collections. That was the official title of our Buchanan Fellows Project that was co-led between myself and Dr. Troy Calico. And before I forget any further, I want to thank a few other people along the way, particularly Rachel Lavender and Phil Nagy and Sarah Swans and Jody Gamble, who helped out along the way in various capacities to keep this project going and to provide a good positive atmosphere and technical support for both the instructors and the students in this. So as uh, Valerie said, uh, we were talking about MEI during the course of this project, and Me MEI is the Music Encoding Initiative. Like the Text Encoding Initiative, it is an XML-based schema that is meant to encode some sort of written document, in our case musical documents, into a machine-readable structure. It's currently hosted in Germany right now. Um, it's growing in eminence in musicology, music analysis, uh, mainly in Europe and Canada at this point. We're a little bit slow on the game in the U.S., but it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. This is um, rolling quite along. Uh, we are on version four right now. Uh, documentation, best practices, since it is a small community, it's a little behind now and then, but they're working on it, and they are a very active community. It just takes a little time. So for our fellowship specifically, we wanted to provide students with the nuts and bolts of MEI. Some of them had experience in it, some of them did not. Some of them had no chemical coding experience at all. So we had a variety of levels at play here, and we had to come up with some sort of uh, curriculum that would uh, keep everyone satisfied in one way. And we had only a small group, but uh, most of the group knew each other already. So that helped keep the uh, cohesion of the team together. We also, besides learning the nuts and bolts, we wanted to apply these skills to a real world situation, namely toward the encoding of a music manic script that we currently have in special collections. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. It was Alfred Schnitke's Symphonisches Vorspiel. We wanted students to have a real taste of what developing a scholarly edition of something was like. Because when they come in the mail and we buy them, they look nice and clean and new with gold lettering on the front. And it's so clean which belies how much arduous work actually went on in the background. And we wanted them to get a taste of what reality was like, because there, many of them are headed into fields like this. And then of course, as is the case with all of these Buchanan Fellows projects, we they had to demonstrate this by a presentation and report. And since COVID had happened by the time this happened, it is all remote. So here are the participants. We had four of them. Three were from Blair. One was from ANS, but she had music experience so she could keep up with the others. That was essential. That was one of the prerequisites. And you can see our images over on the right. Um, we started out with the basics. The MEI website has five little tutorials. They offer how to put in notes, how to put in slurs, how to put in articulation, stuff like that, very basic things. Um, it doesn't tell you how to do a lot of other things because these tutorials are still in development. So we had to go to the MEI documentation for any of these other areas. How do you deal with annotations? How do you deal with deleted portions? How do you deal with fingerings? Anything else we could run into. And we, since we didn't want to drown from the get-go and start with the snake, we started with something a little simpler so we could wet, you know, uh, wet our skills on it. And so we chose a Cherny edition of the JS Bach three-part inventions. Yes, I know there's a controversy about romantic editions of Baroque works, but we weren't worried about word text. We weren't worried about any of that. We just wanted to work on code, so it didn't matter what form it came in. And so you can see here on the left, we have the Cherny edition, and on the right, we have a little bit of the MEI. And actually, this only shows the first rest and the first five notes of the top line. These documents can get really, really long because each little element has to be documented in that code in some way. Once students were able to do this, we rendered it back into music notation using Verovia. This gets it back into a form that humans can read it again. And it's great for double checking your work because it can be shocking what you neglected to do in the code the first time. This is a way to help, help us know that we are back on the right track. The second technique, which is more prevalent in the field, is to create a music document using regular notation software that most people are used to working with. That's usually Finale, Sibelius, or MuseScore, and Blair students in particular are pretty, they have mastered at least one of these in some form. 
And then once you have that, you can export it as music XML, and then you can turn that XML into MEI. That's great because you don't have to learn a new, new notation system. It's also good because a lot of the unique identifiers that we need for every single one of these elements are provided automatically because it's really awful to do this by hand. And it gives you a good base code even if you have to clean it up a bit. And so and since you do have to clean it up, you do have to know the nuts and bolts of how to do that. So around spring break, we thought we were ready to at least try the Snitka, and this was going to be a learning moment for everyone, instructors and students alike. I particularly was not sure what was going to happen when we did this. This is a document, it's four pages. We acquired it a few years ago. It is a short score, and what that means is that, and given that this is an orchestral piece that lasts about 20 minutes, how do you fit that on four pages? A short score is like when you have, um, normally with an orchestral score, each part gets its own line. But in this case, you condense them to a limited number of staves. And so you have to have little indications as to who is playing at what given time with little notes. It's also a working draft. This was not meant for any eyes except Schnick has himself. He was free to be as clean or as messy as he wanted to be. And since he didn't have a great affinity for things like pencil sharpeners, shall we say. There are a lot of smudges, there are ambiguities, there are lots of notes to himself. Some of them are clear, some of them are not clear. And it was up to us to try to untangle this. Here's a little bit of the very beginning. This is the simpler portion. You can see on the second line, there's some deletions. We are mostly down to two staves, but there is a third stave a little bit coming in on the third line, or on the first line, most of the way through the first, the top of the screen. There's also a little percussion line that is in between the second and third staves that doesn't get a staff at all. But all of this has to be accounted for in the code. There are little notes to himself all over the place, most of them in German, some of them in Russian. We have unclear spots. We have to figure out what to do with this. And the students really rose to the occasion rather admirably. I was very proud of what they were able to pull out of this. Since this was going to be very, very, very hard, we all knew this. We decided for the purposes of the fellowship only to focus on the notes. Just get the notes in. That's going to be hard enough. We have four pages. We have four students. Each student gets a page. Each student was supposed to create an MEI file of their portion. And bear in mind, an MEI file for a single page is at least 4,000 lines of code in the case, for ours, and sometimes more. Uh, for those question points, they were to annotate in a PDF to put a little square about, okay, I don't know what this thing is. What is this squiggle? What is he doing here? I don't know. And then correspond that with the Word document that explains what they thought was unclear about any given portion. This is very much about, uh, similar to a how a, a critical report might work in an editorial edition. Of course, this is a very preliminary draft for something like this. Um, and uh, some of the overall challenges we had, uh, obviously the manuscript was full of challenges. We also ran into some problems with the best practices documentation because more than once we went to figure out how to do something and all we found was a placeholder, no actual information. This is a developing thing. We also thought this was important for students to deal with and we're hoping a number of them will be active in the MEI community in the future and I fully expect at least two of them will be. Um, there are conflicts between MEI and Verovio at times. They expect different things of one another. We had to finagle our way around that. Uh, different versions, and then of course, organization. I found it to be a headache, but it was sort of unavoidable. We were working in Zoom, and Brightspace, and Box, and Slack, and GitHub, and organizing that took a little juggling. And in the future, just briefly, um, we'd like students in upcoming years to work on the existing code, and we would like to integrate what we have with other Schnitka drafts out there. We know Juilliard has things. We know Goldsmiths College in London has things. None of those are encoded yet, but we would like to create some sort of collected edition if, or um, a scholarly edition if we can possibly get past the copyright issue. And that is what I've got.